yes, in the iPad app, if you will open up the new Canvas window, it looks like the plus sign, and if you'll see what looks like the little folder menu. Open that up, we can start setting our dimensions. Let's move it to inches if you're familiar with inches. And let's set up the width as a 12 inch, the height as 9 inch, and let's make this a 400 dpi. This will allow us to create a large high-res image that we can print later should we want to. That being said, when you're practicing with your images, you might want to practice with a smaller dimension or file size. Here, we're just going to bring in some images that I have provided for you. Use whatever you'd like, but these are just inspirational images that we can set up on our workspace to act as reference material. We bring the images in and then we can set them up on their own separate layer so we have something to look at while we're drawing. This is just a practice image to show you where I might start. I've taken the pieces of some of my trees and added to. I am not copying. I'm using my reference information as reference, something to refer to. Letting my imagination play a little bit on how I might create a inn or a tavern or a pub of something for gnomes. So I hope this to get us started you can see the image as it's finishing up. But it all started primarily the same way. My 9 by 12 image 400 dpi. I've opened up one of the images that I took from my daily walk that I have also shared with you as inspiration. I saw this little tree and thought immediately it looks like a gnome might live there and if he didn't he needs to. So here just working on a single layer drawing on top of that layer, I've created a quick outline of my tree. Now what you're seeing me do here is just play with every brush you have. Play with them, see what they do. At this underpainting stage, it's primarily more important to just get value down, get some color down. If you're a painter and as an art teacher, I'm sure you teach, get some color down so you have some values established, you can go from up or down. Now, should you lose your drawing, don't worry. The good thing about working digitally is it covers up a multitude of sins and we can always find our work again. What I did is I quickly went into the layers menu. I found the layer that had my line work on it. I tapped on that layer, held it down until it became small. Then I just drug it up to the very top of the layer menu and that puts the layer on top and you'll see the lines. Now there's two things you can do inside that layer. You can leave it a normal, it's only line, or if it happened to have coloring with it too, or maybe some value, you could change the uh, from a normal layer to a multiply layer, which allows you to see through that layer and your painting underneath. Especially working with line, this is a trick you'll see a lot of cartoonists use, so they can have their line and never destroys their line and then they can color underneath it in the appropriate layer. Here I thought I'd show you a couple of other techniques where you could continue to paint on your painting and just add it and subtract it and erase it like you're used to. But working digitally affords us the options of working in many different layers. We can draw our images and save them as separate images, copy them, bring them into our digital image, and then cut them and paste them. When you do, for instance, the door you saw me creating, I took it, I saved it as a PNG file. That makes it a transparent. I turned off the background color layer also so that I was only exporting that layer that had the door on it without any of the background. So what you're seeing me do here is I'm opening up a photograph of a door. This is a photo bashing technique that you can see very often, especially for concept artists. This is something you'll see happen a lot if you're working from your own photographs, especially where you have no copyright infringement policies. You can take an image, open it up into photo bash in this case and you procreate a new document and what we're doing here is using the eraser and I'm just creating a, a nice shaped eraser that I can use to get a clean line with and I'm just going to erase the background part that I don't want just like you would if it were a painting that you want to get rid of digital makes this so much easier 
what I'm doing now is I can even erase a single straight line by going down and if I hold my pen down long enough it, you'll see it turn into a straight line. I release it and it's done. I can do the same thing when I'm drawing circles. Here I'm just quickly trying to get rid of the background elements using my eraser. What I will then do is I will turn the background off. I will save this image as its own separate file folder in a PNG format and then I can go back to it to open it up. Just cleaning up the layer here, I see there's a few boogers left that I haven't quite erased well. I'll clean those up. I've turned off the background color. Now going to actions where I'm going to share it. I want to share it as a PNG. It's exporting it. I want to hit it, save image. So it'll save it in my uh, photos folder. Now let's go back to our original image. Let's open that image up. Let's go up to the little tool and import a photo. Let's find the photo in our Recents folder. There's the door. Let's bring it in. Now, using the arrow key, which allows me to transform whatever my selection is, I'm using now the, the Freeform Transform tool, which allows me to change the sizes quite a bit. You can see what I'm doing there, just trying to line it up with the door space. Now I'm going to choose the Transform Warp tool, and I can start pushing edges around, warp it, pull it, push it, transform it in that way to create the door that looks like it would fit inside this treehouse dewdrop in entryway here. So you can see how the, much time this might have taken you if you had to draw it. And the good thing about this, you can do the same thing with your drawings. If you draw them on separate layers, you can uh, grab that particular image, a door, window, a person, anything you would like to. And you can go into the transform tools and adjust it also to fit into your drawing. What I'm doing now is just changing and adjusting some of the color properties of the door so it fits better within my already drawn image. Going to my adjustments, here I'm adjusting the saturation. So it's a little less, you can see how I can also adjust the hue, play with it, go back and forth. 
This works out great sometimes when you're working with photo reference that you would like to paint on top of and you would like to use your photo reference as maybe an underpainting where you can make it a cool p underpainting or you know maybe a warm underpainting. Uh, you can also change its values, how bright things are, how dark things are. Here I'm also changing the color temperatures a little bit warmer as if that light busting through the uh, trees is lighting on top of my door the same way. Using this as a mask just to show you where it's at. Didn't really want you to look at it other than you could. Here I'm using the adjustments layers now to change some of the gamma, the darkness and lightness of the particular image. Do I want my darks to be lighter? Do I want my lights to be darker? Do I want my middle tones to go one way or the other? You should play with all of these tools so you get better used to it. Now, the good thing about it, Procreate is a great introductory digital drawing app. It's not the standard by which we do professional work, but it's getting closer and closer and closer. And many of the tools that are available to you in Photoshop and other premium painting, digital painting and drawing apps are now available in Procreate. So it's getting better and better at being able to reproduce the same kind of quality that you would have in a professional drawing application such as Photoshop or Corel Painter. I think with each new update, it gets closer and closer and closer to some of the professional tools that we have at our disposal. I must say it's much more affordable at the same time too. This app costs, what, $10? Now, of course, the iPad itself is expensive, but what you can do with it is literally incredible. Now you can see what I've gone into is I've gone into the adjustments with my little magic wand tool, if you want to call it up there, and I've gone into the uh, liquify tool, and I'm using a push, which gives me a lot of the same ways that I was using the transform tool. Here I'm just softening, giving a little bit of a blur by going on to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, softening those edges up so because of my painting looks much more painterly with softer edges, not quite as super sharp as the hard edges in this photo. So I'm going to adjust that. I'm going to add a little noise to it so it has a little bit of the texture as if it were painted with some of my textural painting brushes. And now you're going to see me continue what we had already started in the original painting. So I brought the windows in that I had drawn earlier as a layer and just pop them in place, just very much like I did in the uh, technique I just showed you with the door. As a painter, I should probably point out what I have the most trouble with when introducing digital painting to my students is that they have a certain approach to painting. It's something they're used to. That painting technique may be watercolor. It may be oil painting. It may be pastel drawing and coloring. And I try to find them and meet them where they are letting you know that the digital technology, of course, does not paint opaquely or transparently. It doesn't really paint at all. It's imitating what we would use in traditional mediums by painting with pixels. And so, in this case, I happen to be an oil painter. More than anything, I tend to paint from dark to light because I've taught myself as an oil painting, the limitations of oil painting are that they dry slowly. And because they dry slowly, the paint stays workable for a long time. 
and if I work with a light medium and then try to put a darker color on top of it, it's just going to mix with that lighter color and it's going to turn into mud. But if I take a darker color and I add a lighter color to it, that color will still mix with it, but it'll mix and get lighter, being able to make it appear as if the values are changing and getting lighter too. Digitally, it's really more like acrylic painting if you think about it. I can adjust the opacity of my brush so the paint looks transparent. I can see through it a little bit and it is instantly dry. So when I put on a new color, it's literally on top of that other color. Now with certain brush engines and certain brushes that have been set up for your Procreate, Photoshop, whatever other painting, you can blend your colors too. What you're really doing is taking pixels and moving them over and blending them with the color next to it and it becomes a mixture of the two pixels together. It appears as if you're blending. So digital gives us so much variety. The hard part about digital painting is just getting used to its properties, knowing what it can do. The same struggle we all had when we first started learning oil paint or acrylic or pastel coloring. Every medium has its limitations. We just have to learn what those are and then work within those limitations. The good thing about digital, my paint can be instantly dry or it can be instantly wet again. I work on layers that I can glaze with or that I can create special effects with that simply would take so much time in the traditional medium. You will start learning on to rely and almost plan ahead for the special effects that you're looking for in your finished paintings that you will start incorporating into the way you work. Some of you have been following me as I was painting this. You can see how I just used one of the brushes that was designed to look like grass, popping it in on top of some of my other brush strokes that just imitated grass as I would if I were painting with oil or acrylic brush. I just used a brush that gives me that kind of feathery quality to grass. And then on top of that, I added a few punches of literally grass brush shapes. Now I'm just continuing to add refinements. You know, it'd be nice to have a window here. Maybe this window has some shutters. Uh, start working towards the background. Keep it in the distance. Cool. You're going to see that I'm going to add some highlights on it later. Uh, so I'm just building up with a textured brush, something that imitates the texture of a tree bark. Using another one of my images uh, from my walk as inspiration for my tree in the background. Knowing where the light is coming from, predominantly on the left side. You know, I thought in this case, architecture from nature might be one of those fungi that could be a nice canopy over your window. Now what I've done here is taken a leaf shaped brush, put it on a new layer, chose a much lighter color with that dappled kind of lighting effect. In the normal mode, I've put it there. Now what I'm doing is I'm softening using the Gaussian blur effect to soften the edges of my paint. I will put it in an overlay mode, change the layer from normal mode to overlay mode, and it will start creating the effect as if there is light dappling through a tree somewhere to the left, and the light effect is dappling on top of my tree in the background. I quickly this time drew in the door, just using on a separate layer, drew it with one of my brushes, variated the uh, color of the door itself is to create that look of wood and then just erase the edges and plopped it right where it was painting the background forward in a real painting I tend to paint backgrounds first and then bring it forward the good thing about digital work again is I can control all of that by working on a separate layer I can adjust my edges here what you're seeing me do is add the special effects of the light now every N is going to need its sign, so in a separate document, I'm just creating a sign using uh, to lay it out first and foremost with the symmetry tool so that it's perfectly balanced on both sides. I'm also adding the text tool to show you how I did that. 
I can add text, any text you want, give it the name for the pub that you would like. Here I've imported it into my regular uh, image. I plopped in some shadows around it. And adding some finishing touches. Now here, if you want to create the illusion that your painting was done on paper or on canvas, what we do is we will import a new picture file. In this case, the picture of paper or canvas. I have provided some samples for you to use here also. And this one's a linen canvas texture. Let's just stretch it to make it the size we want it to. We're using the transform tool and the uniform. We're stretching it out so everything stays the same proportions. Now uh, you can see I'm changing the layer property to multiply, which makes it a see-through layer. And now we'll be able to see that linen texture through this layer adding that to my painting as I zoom in you can see that linen canvas texture now on my layers giving it and enhancing that effect of being a traditional oil painting or acrylic painting I can do the same thing with paper texture with a watercolor paper texture any kind of heavy texture one of the things I've done in the past and really like to use are crackle textures or maybe you find a beautiful rock texture outside or that concrete texture especially when you're taking a photograph of it in the sunlight so you get all those really uniformly uh, sandy textured that can create almost the illusion if it's a very heavy watercolor paper whenever you're doing that make sure your image is black and white remove the color from it because the color will have some effect adjust the contrast so you have just as much of the texture as possible so that you're seeing through white because white will become completely transparent whereas the dark grays of the shadows will become your shadows in your image and that's how you will create that illusion that it's on a canvas texture or on a paper texture or a concrete texture or stone texture or wood texture whatever texture you would like to portray here I'm just adjusting some of the curves to get a little bit more contrast, getting, making the whites a little bit whiter. It's been my pleasure. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much.